Amanda, lunch is ready for you to eat whenever you want. It's chicken noodle soup today. Oh, is it that time already? Thanks for cooking for me, Sherry. It's way past noon and you skipped breakfast again this morning. Do you think you could start keeping track of the time yourself from now on? I have to clean up everything after you eat. So get down here and eat. If you can't act like more of an adult, I'm going to stop cooking for you. And you'll have to fend for yourself. I'm sorry. I'll be right there. Thank you. And after you've eaten, would you mind cleaning your room? It looks like a pigsty with all the junk on the floor. And I can see the dust on your furniture from outside your door. Don't you care how filthy that room is? But I just cleaned it three days ago. It can't be that dirty. Three days ago? I want you to keep it clean every day. With the amount of damp and smelly air that comes out of there, I'm afraid that mold will start to grow in David's house. This isn't his house, though. It's my parents. Well, David is the older brother. So after your parents die, he'll inherit the place, right? But I guess we don't need this old dump. You call this an old dump? It was built not too long ago. Then I guess you guys have treated this place very badly. There are even parts of the house where you can see the old wallpaper under the paint. Don't you guys hire professionals to do the renovations here? Anyway, I want to live in a new mansion after this. So we'll either sell the place or have it torn down. If I compare a mansion to this, then I can call this house a dump, right? <laughs> I see. I'm sorry that you think of our house that way. You say that, but... Well, I just wish that I could make up for all the time I've wasted living here with David's parents after we got married. Actually, I really just want to make up for the time I've had to live here supporting you. I'm not living the life I deserve, and I shouldn't have to be stuck here raising a child while David's at work. I need to get out of here and into a new mansion. But wouldn't building a new mansion be hard for David and everyone? You would have to save up a lot more money. And so would I. What are you talking about? You're not paying anything to live here, right? So what makes you think you'd be able to save any money for that place? David is paying for everything here. And he'll pay for the new mansion to be built and for us to live there forever. And do you think you'll be living with us? I still have to make you meals, for God's sake. Us leaving this house might just be the beginning of you learning how to be a proper adult and how to live by yourself, because I won't let you live with us. Did David agree to that? Yes, he did. Do you have a problem with that? No, not really. If he didn't have to worry about you like some dead weight, then we could get out of here. He always tells me that without you, things would be a lot better. I'm dead weight? Huh? Are you not aware of that? I don't care to tell you this, but to all of us, you are just a useless burden that is holding us back. You should be grateful that David hasn't given up on caring for you, or else you might be on the streets right now. Ah, I see. Is that all you have to say? You should be on your knees, begging for my forgiveness, right? I was the only one who had the guts to tell you the truth. The ugly truth that everyone else in this house has been hiding from you. Without me, you'd be living in a fantasy world oblivious to the fact that you're a pathetic loser in this house. Thank you, Sherry. Ugh, you are so dull and lifeless. You never leave your room. You just lie there like a corpse, stinking up the place and making it a pigsty. I'm not just lying here. I'm doing something. Oh, really? What are you doing besides wasting your life away? Maybe you should get out of your cave every once in a while and not just to stuff your face or use the toilet. You're supposed to be an adult, but you still don't have a job and you can't even cook a simple meal. I do have a job, but... Don't make me laugh. You call that a job? Sitting in your room all day? Making a mess of everything? That's not a job. That's a joke. Well, I can understand why you'd think that, but... Save it. I don't want to hear your lame excuses. You know what? Even if you did try to leave the house in those filthy rags you call clothes, you'd be better off staying here. 
Just the thought of someone walking around looking like that in public and claiming to be my sister makes me want to puke. Maybe that's why David locks you up in his house. So that you won't embarrass us all by looking like a homeless freak. You're the one who washes my clothes, right? They shouldn't be dirty then, should they? That's not the point. How ancient are all those clothes you wear? I'm not expecting you to wear my designer outfits because I know you don't have the guts or the taste to pull them off, but come on. You look like you're stuck in a time warp. You're still wearing the same lame and cheap stuff you wore in middle school. How pathetic. I only wear this at home, so I didn't think it mattered. And what about your hair? When was the last time you got it cut? I cut it myself not too long ago, but... That explains why it looks like a bird's nest. You'd be better off shaving it all off. Don't you have any pride? You're an adult, but you still cut your own hair like a child. And you do a terrible job at it. Well, it's not like anyone sees it. And I hate going to the salon. I bet if you went to any salon, the hairstylist would run away screaming or charge you extra for the horror show. Everyone there would be repulsed by you. Well, I don't care what other people think of me. I only care about my family, and I take care of my looks in my own way, in my own room. Then do us all a favor and keep your face hidden from me, okay? Okay. Just the thought of you living in this house makes me sick. You need to wake up and see how we really feel about you. You're nothing but a stain on our reputation, a burden that we have to tolerate. Sherry, I have a favor to ask, and it's really, really urgent. Can I please stay in your room today? What? Are you insane? The air conditioner in my room is broken, and it's so hot and humid in there. I can barely breathe. Then you must have fungus growing in there too, right? I knew it. Your room is a cesspool. But you probably don't mind since you love living in filth. That's not true. My room is not that bad. And I just need to sleep in your room for a few hours while it's hot. When it cools down in the evening, I'll go back to my room. No way. I don't want you sleeping in here and stinking up my room. I have a lot of expensive clothes. And your dirt would ruin them. Why would I let you do that? I'll clean everything before I leave, I promise. It's not just that. How can you be so clueless? Don't you get what I'm saying? Then what can I do? Nothing. You can't sleep in my room, period. It's full of my stuff that I don't want you touching. I won't touch anything. I don't trust you. And how do I know you won't invade my room and make it your second dump? If you sleep in there today, you'll want to sleep in there every day, right? Besides, you don't need an air conditioner to sleep. It's just a luxury for those who deserve it, not you. But I'll only use it when I sleep and turn it off the rest of the time. Maybe you should get a fan or something for your room. That should be enough for you, right? Can I at least sleep in the living room then? It's nice and cool there. I could sleep on the couch or something. Are you kidding me? This afternoon I'm having a lot of friends over. And you being where they can see you would humiliate me. You're having friends over? They're all friends from school. They're all married now. And they all live in fancy houses that they love to show off. I don't want them to see that a mess like you lives here. Or that I live here with David's parents. Stay out of the living room, got it? But why? Why? Are you serious? I just told you why. They're all here to judge me and my house. And you being here would make me look like a loser. What do you mean they're here to judge our house? They're all a bunch of bored housewives. So they're looking for dirt to spread. And one of their favorite topics is where people live. You wouldn't understand. 
but I don't want them to pity me or laugh at me for living in this dump. They think I'm in trouble, or worse, that I'm poor. I can't stop them from mocking me if they find out how I really live. They already made fun of me for living here with David's family. But if they see you, I'm finished. They'll kick me out of their group for sure. Are they really your friends? If they treat you like that, I think good friends would accept you for who you are. And they wouldn't judge you based on where you live or what's going on in your life. And what do you know about friends? You never go out or socialize with anyone. There are different kinds of people in this world. And some of us like to have fun and be popular. That sounds stressful. You have no idea how lucky you are to have no friends and stay in your room all day. I wish I was so ignorant that I didn't care about my looks or my status. Anyway, just remember, stay in your room. And don't come out until they leave. But what if I need to use the bathroom? Why don't you do that before they come? How long will they stay, though? Well, that depends on how we get along, right? If we have a good time, we might drink some wine and party a little. But you wouldn't know what that's like, would you? If they stay for a long time, I might need to use the bathroom again. Can't you just be grateful that I'm not kicking you out of the house when they come? I'd love to get rid of you for good, but that would upset David, and I don't want to hurt my husband. But I have a right to be here. This is still my parents' house, after all. Even though you don't contribute anything to live here, I guess you just expect everything to be handed to you. Sometimes I wonder why David hasn't thrown you out yet. You're just a useless leech, taking up space in there. I could use that room for storing more of my clothes. My closet is overflowing, and I have to get rid of some of my old clothes to make room for new ones. Maybe you should ask him why. Your mom and dad are too nice to you, spoiling you rotten. They're not bad people, but they failed as parents, didn't they? If they kicked you out, you'd have to find a job, right? That would teach you some responsibility and independence. There have been some problems in our family for a while, so... Problems? You're the one who's causing problems in this family. You're the biggest problem we have, right? I guess. Listen, David is not only your older brother, but he's also the one who works full time, making him the leader of this house. As his wife, I'm second in command. Then there's your mom and dad. And then there's you, at the very bottom. <laughs> I've never heard of this system before. Of course you haven't. You're so out of touch with reality, you need me to teach you. They were all too afraid to tell you the truth. They didn't want to hurt your feelings. But I decided to do you a favor and tell you how it is. What I'm trying to say is, you need to realize your place in this house and stop acting like we owe you anything. But that's not how a family should be. A family should care about each other, not prank each other. Ugh, spare me your nonsense. The fact that you're so isolated that you can only talk to us through your phone is just pathetic. I'm sorry about that too. Whatever. I have to clean the house and make it look as fabulous as possible before they leave. And you better not show your face, ever. Then I'll just go down to get some lunch. There's no lunch for you today. What? Your mom and dad are gone for the whole day, and I'm only cooking for my friends, so I didn't bother to make anything for you. That's... You'll survive. Skipping lunch and dinner, right? Humans can last a whole day without food. They say you can even last a week with just water. Maybe if you cared about helping your brother save for a new house, you'd eat less. As for me, I wish you'd just disappear. But... <laughs> it seems like you're not in your room right now. Where did you go? I don't see you in the kitchen or the bathroom upstairs. I went to a Starbucks. What? 
you actually went outside? Don't make people sick by looking at your hideous appearance. It's bad enough that you exist, right? You must have been desperate to get out of the house. If you managed to brave the real world, <laughs> I changed my clothes before I left, and I tied my hair up. Even if you changed, your fashion sense is non-existent. So you still look like trash, right? And tying your hair up doesn't hide how oily and damaged it is. And don't think I forget how you came out of your room when my friends were here. They saw your awful school clothes and asked me who the smelly kid was that lived upstairs. That's exactly why I told you to stay in your room. Such a nightmare for me. And now they won't stop making fun of me for living in a house with David's little gross sister. I couldn't hold it any longer and I had to go to the bathroom. What else could I do? If that's the case, then just go in your room. That's a bit... You must have embarrassed him too, being seen by them. It would have been better if you peed in your room. It already reeks in there, so no one would notice. But it's too late now. The damage is done. But next time, you're not allowed to see my friends. I might even lock you in the basement. And because of how angry you were that day, I decided to spend my time at the Starbucks in Davidson. The Davidson Starbucks? You took the bus there? I only take the bus when I have no choice. And, well... I'm actually amazed that you know how to take the bus. What made you do that? I called a repairman to see if he could fix the air conditioner. But since it's summer, there are too many people who need their air conditioner fixed too. So it looks like it'll take a long time before he can fix it. Is that so? Well, that's good for us. We'll save money on electricity. And David can save more for our dream mansion. Also, Amanda, do you even have the money to go to Starbucks every day? You don't have a real job, do you? If it's only for a little while, I can make do with what I have saved. Don't lie to me. You have nothing but dust in your bank account. You're just too proud to admit that you're living off your parents' charity. That's not true. Your brother is a millionaire, and you expect me to believe that he doesn't share his wealth with you? What about you? You're always flashing David's credit card and checkbook around like you own them. His credit card? David gives me a generous allowance every month, and I use it to feed us all. And sometimes I treat myself to something nice, because I deserve it. What's your point? I'm just curious how much my brother earns each month, and if you even bother to check the balance. What? Are you jealous of me? Are you trying to squeeze more money out of him? Well, you can forget it. I won't let him waste a penny on you. It's not about the money. Then what is it? If you really want to know, you should ask him yourself. It's not my place to tell you, since he obviously wanted to keep it a secret. What the hell are you talking about? You're driving me crazy with this cryptic nonsense. You know that David has the day off today, right? Did he tell you where he was going? He said he had some business to take care of, but he didn't give me any details. Why? Who cares? I don't need to know his every move because I trust him and I know that no one matters more to him than me. I see. Anyway, you're still planning to crash at Starbucks during the day, right? Yeah, I'll make sure to disinfect everything before I leave so I don't infect anyone. And I should be out of here in a month or so. Hmm. Suit yourself. It's your life. You might as well mooch off whoever you can while you can. Amanda, are you still wasting your time at Starbucks? Yeah, so what? Well, I guess this is the last time we'll ever talk because we already have left you behind and moved into our new home. You what? You said you were renovating the house this week. You always hated how it looked so old and shabby. And that's why you packed up all your stuff and moved the furniture. That was all a cover up. We got rid of that dump. <laughs> Who are we? 
me, David, and your so-called parents. We all snooped out of there without telling you, so you wouldn't follow us. You can't be serious. I thought you were just messing with me like always. Do I look like I'm joking? I'm glad I don't have to live with you anymore. From now on, it's just the four of us. Happy and free. Have fun being lonely and miserable. And you better start looking for some new furniture. Because we left that place bare. Except for your room. So that's why David and my parents have been avoiding me lately. I told you before, didn't I? What? That your family couldn't stand you and wanted you out of their lives. But they felt sorry for you a little bit too. So I suggested we could just dump you in that old house and then we could go. Knowing you'd have a roof over your head for a while, at least. <laughs> That's twisted. Where did you go then? If I tell you, you'll come crawling back to us, right? Huh. Actually, I don't want anything to do with you guys. Sure, whatever you say. I'm not giving you our address. But we moved into a brand new mansion. I can finally invite all my friends over without being embarrassed. How did you afford that place? Did you get a loan or something? That's none of your business. And before you worry about us, you should worry about yourself. You know you still have to pay off the loan your parents took out for that house, right? And the bills are going to be sky high with just you there, right? I'll figure something out. Don't pretend to be strong in front of me. I know you're dying inside. You can beg me for help if you want. I might send you some flowers or something. I'm more concerned about David and my parents. Why do you care about David? I just think you're making a big mistake by depending on his money, or lack thereof. How sweet of you to worry. But that's his problem, not yours. You're not a part of this family anymore. Just remember that we're better off without you. And maybe David does have enough money for us. If you're so sure about that, then I won't bother you. By the way, I almost feel sorry for you. <laughs> it wasn't just David, but your parents too. They all agreed to get rid of you. I thought they would beg me to let you know and take you with us, but they just kept quiet, helping us pack our stuff and leave. How does that make you feel? I don't think that is what they really want though, leaving me at this house. I think you should start accepting reality here, Amanda. They wanted to get away from you and stop feeling as though they needed to keep caring for you. Well, at least you'll have that rundown hut to live in. It matches your style perfectly. You'll even be able to run the air conditioners all throughout the house all you want. Although you'll have to pay the electricity bill for all that at some point. Have fun while you still can for me, okay? Amanda, long time no talk. How are you holding up? I'm doing great, and I finally got my air conditioner fixed in my bedroom. That's nice. Listen, I need to talk to you about something. What is it? I hope everything is fine with my brother. Well, about that. I really need your help. You've got to be kidding me. You're begging me for help? This is serious, Amanda. It turns out David has borrowed way more money than I thought. Really? I knew he was always in debt, but... That's... well, this time he has borrowed from some very shady people. He hasn't told me everything, so I don't know how bad it is, but... I should have seen this coming. You should have seen this? Did you know he was getting money from these people all along? Well, David is a hardcore gambler. A gambler? He's addicted to poker and casinos. He always tries to win big, but he never does. I told you he would go out to meet people on his days off, right? Well, those people are probably the worst kind of people you can imagine. But he couldn't get any more loans from the banks. How could he do this? And why didn't he tell me anything? I think he wanted to hide it from you until after the wedding. And if I told you... You would have probably fought with him and divorced him. So, what's going on now? Well, I still need your help. We can't make our payments this month. And when I asked David what we were going to do, he said we can't count on you anymore. Does that mean you've been giving him money all this time? 
That's right. I've helped him out many times when he was short on cash. In return, he said I didn't have to pay him rent for staying with mom and dad. It was a fair deal. I never knew about that. Are you sure you're not lying? This is the truth. My parents knew about it too, and I thought they would have told you before you moved. They were the ones who asked me to help him in the first place. So that's why they were okay with you living alone after we dumped you in that old house? What do you do for a living anyway? Don't tell me you won the lottery or something. Have you heard of the book, A Sudden Little Bird? A book? I think that was a bestseller a few years ago. Well, that's my book. I wrote it. What? Amanda, you're a writer? Back in high school, I used to write short stories with my friends, and that's how I discovered my passion for writing. Because of that, I became a recluse pretty quickly. I wrote about the life of a recluse from the perspective of a bird, and people loved it. Why didn't you ever tell me that? Because you always look down on people who are shut-ins. I didn't want you to know that I was the author of these books. It would have been too hard for me. I had fans begging me to write more, so I wrote the sequels while you were here. But that meant I had to keep living like a hermit. Um, well, then you must be rich, right? Can't you help David out again? No thanks. Why not? You told me to get lost and forget about you guys. And he didn't change his habits after marrying you. So helping him again would only hurt me more. Are you blaming me for this? I didn't say that, but it's both your fault. I guess I'm just glad to be free again. How can you be so cold? I'm releasing a fourth book soon, so I'll have some extra cash. Is that why you always went to Starbucks to work on that story? Yeah, when it's too hot, I can't concentrate on writing. Well then, how much money will you give us? Well, before I agree to anything, I have some conditions for you too. What? Are you sure you're going to make us do something for you? I already cooked for you all the time. And I appreciate that, but that's the only thing I can thank you for. How dare you? Money is a different matter, right? Yeah, you're a stingy writer. You probably don't need that much money, right? What do you want from us? First, I want my mom and dad to move back into this house. That way, you guys can save some money on living expenses. I don't care about that. I hated living with them. Is that all? No, there's more. I want David to go somewhere to get help for his gambling addiction. Like a rehab? Yeah, I hate seeing him suffer from that addiction. And I don't want him to get into more trouble. I'll pay for his treatment. What? So you're not giving us the money? Do you know how much money he owes? I'm not giving you a penny more than that. I have one more thing. That mansion you're living in is way too big for just two people. I want you to find a cheaper place. Like a small apartment. No way. I just moved into this place. And we made it our dream home. I already told all my friends about it. Then you don't realize how bad your situation is. If you don't pay off your debt, things will only get worse, right? Ugh, damn you. I know we're in trouble. If we move, you'll be happy, right? After we pay, we'll come back to that house. We can talk about that later. And one more thing. I want you to get a job as well. What? While my brother is in rehab, there will be no income in that house. I'll cover what you can't pay off, but I won't pay for everything. So you better watch how much water and gas you use. Then where do you expect me to work? Maybe at the place you worked before you married David? But I quit my job after I married David. There's no way they'll take me back now. Well, you're in a desperate situation, so you should try. Forget it. I'm done with what you want from me. I'll just divorce David. 
You can do that if you want, but you'll still be responsible for some of his debt. Responsible? Yeah. He's been borrowing money from all kinds of bad people. And they might come after you too, if you try to run away. I'm sure they'll find you. They can't do that to us. Well, you'll see soon enough, won't you? This has to be a joke. What am I supposed to do? Like I said, you need to get a job and start earning some money. I get that, but I can't work for the city again. I'll have to look for some other job. You promise? Oh, and by the way, I want to cut ties with you too, once we clean up your mess. So don't bother coming back to this house. Why? I only want to talk to you when it's about paying me back. I don't want myself or my parents to suffer because of you. And I have to protect my reputation as a writer. I have a lot of fans who read my comics. I might even write a fifth book where the bird has a brother with a gambling problem, just like David. That could be a good spin-off, don't you think? Don't you dare use us for your stories. I was kidding. <laughs> How was I supposed to know that? Well, fine. I'll look for a cheap apartment like you said. Good. After you move, I never want to see you again. Please stop treating me like garbage. Just be grateful that I'm giving you any money at all to help with your debt. I'll make sure I write an invoice, so you pay me back the right amount. Fine. Happy? Just so you know, Having a brother and a wife like you is horrible. You're the last two people I care about on this planet. You should be ashamed of depending on his little sister for money. So from now on, don't cause any more trouble. Okay? After I told Sherry my demands for helping her, I sent David to a rehab center to cure his gambling addiction. Sherry had no choice but to do as I said, and got a low-paying job at the supermarket, scanning items. To their horror, I made them sell their mansion as soon as Sherry got their job. Now, Sherry is living in a filthy and dilapidated apartment on the outskirts of town, all by herself. Mom and Dad came back to my place, and we are a happy family again. Just the three of us. I published my fourth book, and it was a huge success. I got rave reviews from my fans and critics alike. I decided to write about what happened in my life. The bird's older brother's wife was always mocking and insulting her, but it seems that people didn't like that story for the fifth book, so I scrapped it. At least my fourth book made enough money to support at least my fourth book made enough money to support my parents and to give Sherry the last bit of money I owed her. I can't wait to move on from this nightmare. And hopefully David will recover and start working again, taking care of Sherry. But honestly, I don't give a damn about them anymore. I hope they never show up in my life again.